Hello, today we are going to talk about incidence rate and this is a follow-up from the previous lecture on the disease measures of frequency. Recapitulating from the past lecture, we talked about the cumulative incidence and today we are going to compare that with the uh, incidence rate. The cumulative incidence looked at the whole period of time for all the animals which were being enrolled in the study. And therefore that was a proportion. So we see that uh, from the four cattle, if we get one sick, then it's one out of four or it's 25% uh, of, the, of the herd infected. So that's the uh, proportional concept for the cumulative incidence. Meanwhile, when we talk about the, the incidence rate, then we, we speak about the time component and then we sum up all the periods of, of animals at risk during the study, or let's say the period where the animals have been disease-free and sum them up. So there is the denominator is composed by the time itself. It's not composed by animals. So we count the cases on top of the of this time period, which was th the whole time period at risk. Of, so the animal time at risk. So the definition of the incidence rate, it basically measures the speed of the disease propagating into a population. And the denominator, as mentioned, is the animal time at risk. So the formula to calculate it is uh, number of new cases of the disease that occur in a population during a particular period of time above the sum over all individuals of the length of time at risk of developing the disease of interest. So this uh, measure basically, it's a measure of a population base and it's not a measure which could be interpreted at the individual level. However, as soon as an animal becomes infected, the period of time that he is supposed to contribute in the study, it's not counted anymore. So the whole period of at risk basically is the period where the, the animal itself is disease free. The properties of the, of the incidence rate are that it can allow for competing risks, which means that animals which get sick or are affected by other uh, diseases or die from other causes can actually contribute the time period within the study being at the risk of developing the disease of interest. So that's a, a, accounting for, for other risks involved in, which is, on the other hand, a deficiency, let's say, of the cumulative incidence. The incidence rate in itself has uh, an inverse time, so it can go from zero up to the inf infinity, and that infinity depends by the time scale we choose to, to follow through. So the time could be endless if we continue counting the, the, the animals in the studies. The incidence can be calculated based on an approximate denominator or an, an exact denominator. The exact denominator is the sum of all time periods where the animals are at risk, while the approximate denominator is the total number of animals at the beginning of the study, which are enrolled in the beginning of the study, plus the number of animals left at the end of the study, and then divided by two. And this accounts that because animals goes in and out of the study, it's assumed that in average animals are removed from the study at the middle of the study period, and that's for we, we have them. On the other hand, incidence rates has also limitations. And one of the limitations is that it does not account or differentiate about uh, animals which contribute only a short period of time at risk against those which may contribute for a longer period of time at risk. So it's, it's just an averaging period. On the other hand, since this calculates only average rates over time period, it also hides temporal patterns of the disease and seasonalities which might occur during, during the whole study period. 
And then another limitation is that the same numeric quantity based on different sample sizes of populations and different study groups could give the uh, same numeric results. For example, an incidence rate of one deceased case per 100 animal weeks can be obtained following up 100 animals on average for one week, but the same value of one animal per, per 100 animal weeks could be obtained if we follow two animals for 100 weeks altogether. So it's the same result, but the, the, the study group changes. So that's the, the, the principle here. In order to, to make more clear, let's take an example as a study. In the study, we will follow up a flock of sheep for 12 months and count the cases and count the, the, the deaths caused by contagious agalactia, which is a disease that has been firstly recognized in the 1800s in Italy. And it was uh, called mal di sito, meaning uh, disease of the place. And that was in reference to the ability to persist in an environment and contaminate newly introduced flocks into the, into the pastures. And yes, there is a wolf in the picture, but we're gonna talk about him later on. In Hypothetically, if we follow up the 10 animals for the 12 months, and uh, these 10 animals never show the disease, we will end up having 12 months of time at risk for each of the animals. So in total, because we have 10 animals, we'll get 120 sheep months, which represent all the 10 subjects, and which all of them contributed 12 months of disease-free time at risk. However, that's not the case because usually we are looking for a disease. So this is just hypothetically, if we would follow up and then no disease would show up, we'll end up with the 120 months uh, sheep, sheep at risk. But we are looking at contagious agalactia and we are looking for, for cases. And a case of uh, the disease would be an animal which dies from from the from the disease and that's the definition for for having count one case and uh, in the example we're having here we start with the onset of the disease and which is marked there by an o for the animal a and with an x the period when it dies so animal a had the onset of the disease in february and died in may and in total, it contributed only five months of the time at risk. And that's because if we count the period, let's say in January, the animal was not sick, but still it was at risk of getting the disease. And then until it died, he was at risk of dying from the disease. And we sum up in the right column all the time at risk for that animal. We add three more cases in the, in the diagram here, and we have the animal A, C, and I. And in total, these animals have 22 months, sheep months at risk. But we can add also one more, and then this is a case, but indeed the case died beyond the study period. So, we would have the three cases A, C, and I, but not the G, because we said that the case definition is an animal which dies from the disease. Indeed, that the animal had the onset of the disease within the study period, but it did not die. So we don't count him as case. So we have three cases which goes into the numerator of the fraction. However, to, to, for, for different diseases, and different duration of a disease, an animal could contribute to the study with different periods of time at risk, especially with diseases with short outcome and recovery, where the animal can get again or contract again the disease. So it can contribute in different slices and bits and pieces to the overall study. But this, that's not the case in here. In this example, we'll follow only with the, with the cases which die from, from the disease. 
And then we, we have two more animals which never got the disease, so they have been followed up through the whole study, and then they contribute 12 months each because they never died from the disease. Then we have one animal which was sold and one animal which was bought in and introduced it into the flock. So one animal went out of the flock and then one animal comes into the flock. And that's normal life because animals goes in and goes out from, from the flock. And that's, that's how we consider populations to be open. So animals migrate in and migrate out or die in from other causes and so on. If we follow through the animals, the other animals, we have one animal which was uh, slaughtered by the farmer and then the age animal was basically eaten by the big badoof that we saw there in the picture. So both cases in this, in this example are considered competing risks. So animals which die from other diseases or die for a different cause are caused competing risk. And as we mentioned before, these animals contribute again to the time at risk of the total time at risk. So we would have the, for the animal F which was slaughtered, we would have six months. And for the sheep which was eaten by the wolf, we would have five months contributing to the total. And if we summarize now the whole flock followed up for the 12 months, we have for each of the animals with little numbers there in gray, the counted period of months at risk of contracting the disease or dying from the disease basically. And then we have animal A, which has one, two, three, four, five, and then animal B, which contributed with 12 months. Animal C, which was in the first two months uh, not having the disease, but then it contracted the disease and then died at the seventh month, and so on. And then we have the sold animals, which was during the period where, he where it was within the flock, it was at risk of dying from the disease. However, it never got the disease and was sold. And now we have animal E, which was brought into the, into the flock, was brought into the bazaar and, and brought into the flock. And this animal was followed through in the study, not just from the beginning of the study, but it came in quite late. So it's contributing with seven months, but seven months from from June, and that's to be kept in mind because it's very important to know with how many animals we start with the study and with how many we end up. And so on with the animals F, which was slaughtered, animal G, which was sick but didn't die. Then we had animal H with uh, five months, which was eaten by wolf, and as we said, it's a competing risk in this case. And then animal I, which was uh, having a very acute disease, but still has contributed as time at risk for, for 10 months in the study. And then animal J, which never got the disease. So in total, we have 18 months of sheep months at risk, which forms our denominator. And we had three cases, which was uh, uh, dying from the disease, meaning we had three cases above 80 sheep months at risk, which gives us an incidence rate of 0.037 cases per sheep month. Or if we multiply by 100, we would have 3.7 new cases per 100 sheep months at risk. And this is how we calculate the exact method for estimating the incidence rate. If we see the approximate method, we said that we count the numerator, we include all new cases of the disease that occur into the population during a particular period of time. And then on the denominator, we add up the number at risk at the beginning of the study period plus the number at risk at the end of the study period. And if we remember, we had one animal which was bought in, 
So we didn't have 10 animals basic in the beginning of the study because the animal was born in June. So we had nine in the beginning and we had only four at the end, which was the two animals which never contracted the disease. There was one animal which was sick but didn't die and was not counted as a case. And there was this animal which was both, so there was four at the end. So if we do the math and we say three on top of nine plus four, which, which makes 13 divided by two, which is 6.5 times 12 months, then we get an estimate which is 0.038 cases per sheep month, which is very similar with the 0.037 cases per 0.037 cases per sheep month on the exact method. However, the exact and the approximate values are equal when the exact average period of risk for deceased animal is half of the period of the observation, so it's half of the period of the study. In this case, the approximate, approximate denominator overestimates the exact rate because the exact, the exact average period of risk of deceased animals is more than six months. So Another concept involved with, with the time component of the incidence rate is the internal time component, which basically says that if we have measured in months, we could convert the, the incidence for years or for days or for millennia or for centuries or whichever time scale we would wish so. So if the incidence rate has been estimated for for a month, let's say, at risk, and the rate per, per animal days is required to be known, then we would have uh, the, the total number of days, days per month in average, it's let's say 30 days 0.4, without calculating the leap years in, in one month in four, four years. Then we would have 0 0.37, which was the, the incidence rate, Summing up one, which is a month divided by number of days in the average number of days, and it would give us 0 0.0012 sheep days at risk. If we want to do it for years, let's say conversely, it would be 0 0.44 animals years at risk. Another important concept related to incidence rate is the waiting time. So let's take our incidence of 0.037 cases of sheep per month and then cancel out the cases and the sheep. And this can be done because basically cases in itself are sheep. So we, we cancel them out and then we are just left with months in the denominator and the units would be one over months. And if we take the inverse of of that we would get 1 over uh, 0 0.037 per 1 over a month which equals basically to 27 months and that means that we have to wait in average 27 months to see one death or one case caused by contagious agalactia and that's in other terms the survival time and this and on the survival time we're gonna expand the concept in the next lecture till then be safe and see you next time